Hey guys, welcome back. So it's just a couple of weeks to go until we finally pick up our Greenwing Macaw, which we've currently been calling Egg. Now the reason why we've been calling it Egg is we don't yet know whether the Macaw is a boy or girl, but make sure you've checked out our naming video up here somewhere um, to show you some of the names, but hopefully any day now we should be able to find out the sex and we'll do the official naming. But this time round, because it is just two weeks away, Louise and I thought we'd take a few moments to show you just the various amounts of things we've already brought for our Greenwing Macaw, including the cage, which you can just about see behind us, but a separate video for that one, so make sure you check that out as well. Um, and give you an idea of what we've brought and what we still need to buy as well, and also the costs behind owning the Greenwing Macaw when it hasn't even arrived in your house. Okay, so first up, we're gonna talk about kind of like the research. So to be honest with you, Louise done a lot more research on than I did before we put the order in for Macaw. So it wasn't necessarily research just about my cause, but also research about the breeder as well. So we decided earlier on that we didn't want to just go and get any old macaw from any old breeder. We wanted to make sure we understood the role of the breeder and the history behind the breeder as well. So with that, I'm gonna let Louise talk to you about this particular book, which is called The Ultimate Parrot. Thank you very much. Um, this book is by our breeder, who is called Barrett Watson. Uh, yeah, I did do a lot of research. Uh, around different breeders, um, there are quite a few, but Barrett came up as being one of the top breeders uh, in the country, and I think from what we've been told, he's probably regarded as the top breeder in Europe now. Um, so wanted to do a bit of reading, and I thought, well, this guy sounds like he's pretty kosher, so I, I found this on Amazon and decided that it would be a good idea to get a copy and have a, have a bit of a read through, give ourselves a bit of background knowledge. Uh, it was still kind of while we were deciding, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Um, and it's, it's a really good book, actually. I think it's kind of concise. Uh, it goes through the different sections um, in terms of the, the type of parrots, the breeds you can buy their general behaviour, where they come from in the world, um, how they nest, um, it goes through anatomy, which is really interesting, um, there's some sections on husbandry, recognising some of the, 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 sort of the common illnesses or um, so, ailments that so you might really to show everything you'd want to know about owning, uh, owning a parrot and all the things they come across. So I think what we'll do it be useful let's do a separate review on that book okay for our subscribers next time round but let's move on to the rest of the stuff we yeah, bought already sure. before so rough price on the book um i think i got this one for about 12 pounds online it's about 12 pounds check out amazon as per normal for that particular book so then moving on we also have another book for you so okay we'll do a close-up this one this book is called the parrots wizard's guides to well-behaved parrots second edition and this is by michael I'm probably going to mess up his surname. Sajin. Now this basically is from the Parrot Wizard. So if you're on YouTube, you obviously are right now, just do a quick search for the Parrot Wizard. You'll find a really great guy, a lot of great video content. So we found him on YouTube first and we decided to buy his books. And again, similar to the book from Barrett, who was our breeder. But really from, me, from my point of view, really easy to read. This is my current train read when I'm commuting to work. So re recommend that one. And this retails at roughly the same price. I can't see off the top of my mind on my head right now. But what we'll do, oh yeah, 45 US dollars basically right now. So probably about 30 pounds, but we'll make sure we link all these books and everything we're talking about in the descriptions below to make it super easy for you. So really moving on to like the next category of things we brought for our parrot is really all about, about training. And it's still not working on Louise. But so, okay, you would have seen these before, you would have heard them for sure. And this is simply a parrot clicker. So the idea behind this is to use this sound and then do something with the parrot. So if you reward it or get its attention. So okay, we've been reading about this. We're new to training macaws, we've not hidden that, and so we haven't got, even got our macaw yet. The idea is we're gonna use this clicker to either reward good behavior or to get the bird's attention. So make sure you find out how that's been working out for us. And this was a, um, brought from our main, I guess, parrot retailer in the UK called Northern Parrots, and for just a few pounds. So, it's still, not working. still not working, but let's, let's move on from that one. I guess, along the same kind of theme as well, 
we just have like a really, well, a water bottle here. So macaws like to shower like a lot of birds do, except Angry Jed. Make sure you check out his YouTube playlist as well. That's our Paris Hawk. But so this really is just a spray bottle for spraying down the macaw. Now look, ideally we'll get to the point where the macaw will be happy enough to shower. So we're happy enough to come into a shower with us or actually go and stand in the shower or have a hose pipe outside. But initially, just to get used to some fine spray. Now, what some parrot owners do is use a spray bottle for bad behavior. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna try and ignore bad behavior and just reward good behavior and try and change the behavior patterns through good rewards rather than paying attention to the negative behavior. So we've bought a water bottle. Again, probably just four or five pounds five, six dollars for that water bottle. So let's move that on. So next, it really comes to the cage. So we do have a separate cage video. Now, it's interesting when it comes to cages, you read all sorts of different advice. I was talking to somebody on the YouTube comments just the other day who said, your cage is far too small. I said, well look, here's the advice for cages. And again, we did a lot of research on this, including reading the books, talking to our breeder, Facebook groups, Google research, and the general best advice for cages is to get the biggest a cage you can afford or you can fit into your property for your parrots, whether it's a large macaw, smaller macaw, or just a general parrot, say an African grey. Get the biggest you can afford or fit in. So that's what we've currently done, and I'll show you around the cage. So you can see it is a big cage. Now, a greenwing macaw is one of the biggest macaws you can get. When we get our macaw, it's still gonna be a baby. It won't be completely fully grown, but it's already quite quite a size. So we've gone ahead and we've got the biggest we can get. But on top of that, what we've done is we've actually built a separate aviary outside, which we're planning to allow the macaw to use from next year onwards. So there you go, there's two different living areas for the macaw. But our idea behind the macaw is it's not gonna spend a lot of its time in the cage. We will we'll have a routine for the, for the bird for sure. We want the bird out of its cage, we want the bird with us. If we're going out as well, we want it out with us. So our journey here is to get the bird to a point where we can free fly the macaw. So hopefully within about 18 months, we'll be out and about and you'll see lots of footage online of us free flying. So our bird is not going to be permanently caged. But so let's go on to toys for the cage. So this is our first choice of toy, which is basically a few logs, a few different bits of rope or string with a coconut shell underneath. So very colorful and bright, just like the macaws themselves. They like these types of toys, things they can play with, twiddle with, bite into, try and undo, see what's underneath here and just generally explore. Now this was uh, 13 pounds from our local pet shop. It's about the same online as well. Now, our advice around having a baby bird and also when it comes to toys is very much less is more. So don't go and buy a cage like we've done and put loads and loads of toys in it and then go and put a baby parrot in there. It's just gonna be too much, it's gonna be overwhelmed, it's not gonna know about it. When you first get, when we first get Armour Core, Armour Core is only just about ready to stand on a perch. So the idea is you have the perches in there, you have the perches as close as possible to the food. So they don't have to climb up and round through an assault course, do dodging toys to be able to get to their food. What they need is food, water, perch, and plenty of attention and affection to start off with. So right now we've pretty much gone for one toy and that's all we'll do until we see how the bird gets on with that toy and how the bird develops in the coming months. So let's move that one off. Having said that, just as a bit of fun, we did pick up this little chappy here which is just actually, it's a dog toy. So it is bird safe as well. It has got a reinforcement with inside it so it doesn't get ripped apart. But we saw some stuff online and some different uh, channels that we follow, Shelby the Macaw, uh, Mikey Amir the Macaw, we profile those, we recommend you do too. And we thought, Joe, this is pretty cool. Some of those birds have different toys. And so we wanted a toy as well. Actually, possibly it wasn't on those two. I'll find out who it was and we'll make sure we link below. So that's just been all a bit of a joke. The bird might even get on with it. Looks a bit like you. Hey daddy. Hi daddy. And apparently it looks a bit like me as well. Okay. So moving on and going back, we do also have a, a rope perch, which we'll put in there. Now we might not put in there on day one. This has a couple of mounting points, one in the middle to go onto any bars. 
and a mounting point at either end as well. It's just really a way of using it as a, another perch. Because as you've seen with our particular cage, it only came with two perches. So this may not be in there straight away, but we'll just see how we get it set up. And we're actually gonna set it up in a separate video, which will follow this video. So watch out for that in about a week's time. So that's really classing that as a perch rather than a toy. And then I just realized we did buy a spare toy. So everything that I've just said about toys is relevant, but because we don't know what our bird is like, you know what it likes, what it doesn't like, we bought a secondary backup toy, which is just, again, a whole load of blocks of different shaped wood, loads of bright colors again. Birds particularly like this. We just attach to the top and then just hang down and you can actually bend it around a little bit as well. So this one was, again, 15 pounds, so about 20 bucks, just under 20 bucks, 18 bucks. Um, and we'll see how it gets on. But really, just again, to reiterate, this is a backup toy. We're not putting it in the cage straight away. It's just a spare one in case we get through on rather quickly. And I think that's the thing with, with macaws, is you know you can change their toys around over time. Don't just leave them all in the cage. Swap them around, have some spare ones ready to go, because they will get through them. They, they play with them, they destroy them, they'll bite them, and they'll, they'll eventually break over time. This is something that we've managed to forage for rather than buy. Uh, we've seen quite a few people using pine cones as a means of enrichment for their birds. And our breeder has advised us in the first year of our parrot's life, it needs plenty of fats. Um, so fatty foods like seeds and nuts, um, nut butters that don't have salt in and lots of additives in, so like pure nut butters as a treat. Um, Apparently if you put the nut butter in between all the little segments of the pine cone it can keep a parrot busy for quite some considerable time. Uh, the good thing about this, this is it was free. <laughs> um, we, I think Barrett did mention as well, um, after the, the first year then you, you back off the fatty foods a little bit yeah. just to allow them to build good feathers and lots of amino acids and things like that for good healthy growth. Um, so we, we've been, well, your daughter mainly has been around. <laughs> Uh, collecting lots of really, really nice pine cones. Uh, we'll see how long they last. <laughs> it might not last very long, but it's... No, but again, the, the idea is not to put them in on day one. Yeah. So you'll see that we will be redoing our journey with Armour Core like we have done so far. We'll probably end up doing weekly or bi-weekly updates, and you'll see us starting to introduce some of this stuff into the cage. So just to finish with as well, um, going back to the cage, and again, we'll do a separate video on this, one of the more expensive items that you need to constantly replace in your cage is, of course, the chippings. One second. So, <laughs> you can't see me, but you can see this. So, wood chippings. Over here, this is a 15 kilogram bag. Um, this is number eight, which dictates the size of the chipping. So we've gone for a larger size to see how we get on. And this is probably just about enough to cover the bottom of our cage. So we'll have to get a second bag as a spare bag. And each time we, every other day when we clean out the birds, we'll be scraping some of these, the food off and the mess and some of these chippings away and then replacing them with the fresh bag. So definitely don't forget your chippings. But these, this bag is about 38 pounds. So at 45, 50 bucks. So this is gonna add up a little bit, but it's all part of owning a macaw. Put those away. So finally, rather than, let me sit back down. So finally, rather than putting the shippings directly into the steel tray on the bottom of the cage, what we're gonna do is align that with newspaper first. Now look, it's 2021, I don't buy newspapers anymore. To be honest with you, I've never bought a newspaper. Everything I do is online and it's digital. That's how I consume information, including news. But luckily for us, our local supermarket, which is Waitrose, gives out free newspapers. So top tip, I probably shouldn't be recommending you all go to Waitrose to get a few news, free newspapers, but if you shop in there for sure, I think that's a fair deal. Have a flick through. Rather than throwing it out or recycling it afterwards, recycle it by first, put it into the bottom of your parrot's cage. It'll definitely protect the cage, it'll make it last a lot longer because liquids won't be going directly onto the metal, they'll be going onto the chippings, and underneath the chippings will be a layer of paper. It's a little cheeky tip for That's you. That's our top life hack this week. <laughs> Not much of a life <laughs> hack, we'll probably get ripped into that one. But yeah, yeah, it's gonna work for us, so we'll set up the cage shortly and let you know how we've gone. Hope that's useful. We'll have a quick tot up as we're going through the video. We'll make sure everything's linked below for you. That's all we've started with so far. 
Obviously, on top of that, you have the cost of the Macaw as well. We've done four long road trips to visit our Macaw so far, each one of them costing quite a lot of money in not only in time, but actually going out with fuel and that, but it's all part of it for us. It's part of the journey. It's part of the excitement of owning a Macaw. For us, it's not about the cost. Really, the point in this video is to give some people ideas that it can be expensive to own a Macaw. I'm pretty sure we'll be redoing this video in a few months time when the McCall has been out and about around our house and, and put holes or marks in the table, <laughs> set the chairs, possibly the door frames as well. It's a common thing you see in a lot of McCall videos, but we don't know yet because Egg isn't home, so we'll let you know. Anything else to add? I think I'm good at the moment. I think we'll, uh, we'll add as we go. Okay, great. I hope you liked the video. Let us, let us know either way in the comments below. Let us know what else you want to know about owning owning a macaw. Need to get my words out. So let us know what you want to know, what you want to know, and we'll do our best to share with you that bit on our journey. See you next time. Thank you.